Alright, hello everyone! Today I'm here with the most hyped Magic player right now, Andres Trasky. How it's going? I, I, I'm just like burning with je jealousy, but I'm trying to like hide it inside, but like... <laughs> yeah, I, I know, this is probably one of the worst times in your life, right? No, the, the worst time in my life was when you won a Pro Tour. Like, I'm, now I'm like kinda already used to it, like, you know, you just like... <laughs> like, the, the, the dagger is like going deeper and deeper, but it's like already too deep, deep, deep that like, it's like deep enough already that, uh, you know... It, it doesn't really change anything anymore, I think, for me that much. I mean, I, I think this is like bigger achievement than winning the Pro Tour. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not necessarily denying that. But like, when when you when you won the Pro Tour, like that 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 time, like you know, if the MPL was announced. You you were probably not going to make it. Like it wasn't like a great of a spot. We were like kind of in the same spot. So I was like maybe still at a, like slightly comparing myself to you. But now you're just like so far away that like I'm, I'm starting to get to a point where I'm like you know cheering for you a little bit, I guess, because, wow. you know, there's just like no way for me to catch up. So it just like doesn't really matter anymore for me. Maybe maybe one day you will get there. No, I, I don't know. I, don't, I think I will give up before that. So well, I hope you don't. I would like love to see you top eight a Pro Tour one. <laughs> there is no like Pro Tour anymore. Like I, I think that even if I top eight it like one of these like arena events, it would be like the same feeling that you get from top eighting the Pro Tour. But I think it's very, very different. But maybe the Pro Tour will come back, you know, who knows? I think I think it is probably gonna come back. Yeah, like what do you what do you think about that? Like, you know, most people are not really happy with how things are right now. Also like it's obviously like because of corona as well. But you know, you know, I I, I think the reason why they made MPL is that they just wanted to make these like star players, but that probably didn't really happen. No one is really watching those tournaments anyway. Like, do you think that they will go back? Like what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think they will almost certainly cancel the MPL. You think so? Will, yeah, almost close to 100%. But they cannot do that, they cannot do that this year, right? Because like people are playing for it already. Like, do you think they can do that for the next year? Like, like yeah. even, even, even this year, they, they're, you know, like the, the people who get in, they're kind of like go there with like the assumption that you're like playing for the fact that you can be there next year as well, right? So like you, they cannot like immediately cancel it, I think, but. Well, I mean, they could. I mean, they did that with, a, with the previous system, I guess. So they can do anything, I suppose. I mean, they, they definitely tried in the past. And I mean, anything could happen. Hopefully, I, I hope it doesn't, because this is like, I, I worked pretty hard this year to make it back into the MPL. And I mean, my, I, I think they'll probably just, like, the next year they will basically pay us what they paid us this year. And uh, they will then probably revert to the pre MPL. Uh, Prize money, basically, which Platinum used to be like fifteen thousand a year or something. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's what's gonna happen. Do you do you, do you do you think they're like actually going to go to something very similar to what it was before, or are like are they going to like try to make it a little bit different so that they like disguise the fact that they failed and they have to go back? <laughs> uh -huh. you, I, do, do you understand my question? Yeah, I understand. It's I, it's hard to say. I, mean, I think it'll definitely look closer to the model that they, that that we used to have, with like pro tours and stuff. It will probably not have leaks. So I, I think basically no one likes the leaks. It's, it's kind of sad because I don't know. I, I think the leaks are a cool idea. I think uh, execution is pretty bad. Um, like, what do you what do you what do you, what do you what do you think is bad about it? Like, well, you... I mean, but no one really cares about it. I think. Why do you? Why uh, do you? Why, mean... why do you think that is? Like, do you, do you just think that people like to watch like the actual like cards getting played better, or was it more that you know before you had the dream that you can maybe qualify to the pro tour and win it, and now it's just like not in the reach, so no one cares? Like, what do you think that is? I think that there's like a lot of reasons, but the, those you mentioned are, I think definitely Corona definitely didn't help. Uh, I think the league system is overall just too complicated. Um, like for example, this this week is just kind of crazy. The, the the system, no one really understands or follows it. I think people were used to uh, the pro tour, even though the the pro tour also wasn't like super easy to understand. There were like some uh, weird things there, like GP caps, 
uh, for, for example, but... Uh, yeah, and I like the timing of events. I think the fact that we had a we had the biggest event of the year a week before a new set comes out, it's just unforgivable. Like no one cares about this because it's boring. Like I I have played this this rogues deck that I've played, I've been playing it for half a year in every single tournament. <laughs> basically and Wait, uh, didn't you, you you didn't play Sultai, the the one that Sifka played in the in the in the yeah, event? You did? Okay. I played Sultai a couple times, but I played Rogues a lot. Yeah, it's just it's just not good. Like for, for example, I, I know Paulo said that like uh, his, his an SCG they just ask him to write about the new set because that's what they always do. But he's like, sorry guys, I'm I'm not gonna be able to write this week because I have to prepare for this tournament and I just I haven't seen the spoiler yet because I've been putting all my work towards this. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's understandable, but I, I think I I think if the tournament was in two weeks, it would be so much more interesting for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you mentioned Paolo because I think you actually beat him uh, three times this week. Is that, is that, is that accurate? Yeah. Uh, exactly. ma maybe like if, if someone is living under the rock, maybe I should say that I didn't mention it at all in this video. This video. The actual reason why I'm making this video, uh, you know, there are like two other interviews with Andre that I did. One is kind of recent, but the reason why we're doing it t today is that there was like a, a tournament this weekend. It's called like MPL. Weekend or what? What was the actual name? I don't, I don't even know. The actual name is Strixhaven League Weekend. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, it doesn't it, make any sense because no Strixhaven cards are, are present. Well, I didn't even realize that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, really and I, you ended up in first place, or like you had the most uh, wins in in this weekend, and you also ended up first in the in the MPL. Is that is that is that is is it like over now? Is like did, did the cut happen? Uh, well, it's over for me. Okay. Um, so the, the, that that's yeah that's why I'm saying the system is so complicated. Cause, like I I for example last time uh, I I get a lot of messages after last week not not this one but the one before that I got a lot of messages congratulating me on making worlds because I was in top four and people just thought that it was over but there's like still so much to go on and so after this week me the the, the first person uh, they get cut from the league and they lock both MPL next year and worlds but the league continues without me. Because oh, so it's only the so it's only the first place. I thought it was like the first four people or something. That's not the case. No, it's, it's the first, and then the bottom three also get cut. Oh, so like what what what's gonna happen? Because like it, it's actually kind of crazy. Like I follow Magic. Like kind of like I would say that on average, I'm definitely following it quite close closely. Right? Maybe not like like hundred percent close, but you know I'm very invested in Magic. But not even me like I really understands the system. Like I don't really know. So maybe we can just like use you to use you today, so so that you can explain yeah. to us. <laughs> so so there's two more league weekends, and after the next one, there's again gonna be one person. Uh, the first person will again get qualified for roles and for MPL and they will leave the league and then there's going to be the last weekend and in that weekend the first two I will again qualify for roles and uh, log the MPL slot so it's going to be four people total mm -hmm. but they are removing us one by one because they want to they don't want me to be ahead by like 10 points and then play against my friend and oh I see which is like I don't know it's pretty unlikely to happen but I mean it did happen this week like I already had the last two rounds this week I just played that it was already clear that I was gonna win so mm -hmm. I could but obviously I didn't concede that even one of, the, one of those matches so only four people have MPL locked and you know some people get eliminated and the rest is put into gauntlet with the best rivals right yes, yes. and it's the same in, in rivals is the same though the first four they lock roles and uh, qualify to MPL and then a lot of people go into the gauntlet, which is like, yeah, it's going to be a pretty huge tournament at the end of the year where like everyone's future will be decided. Yeah. Basically. Um, so you did you did great this weekend, but even before this tournament, you were in the third place. Uh, I think you had like a lot of point. You had a lot of points ahead uh, before the fourth place, right? Like you were. It's, it was like uh, Gabriel Nassif, Paul, and you had like the most points. Yeah, we were like three or four points ahead of, of Brad, who was fourth. Mm -hmm. But you know, did, did this weekend did you did you did you actually lose any matches? I remember that you were like eight zero, but I don't, I don't know if you like lost any of the last matches. I, I lost the last one. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it was it's kind of crazy because in the the previous league weekend, I I won the last five rounds, so I won like sixty matches in a row against MPL, which is like 
That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that was the one time where, where Luis went undefeated to B team, which is, I think, the only time it's happened. And, and this is probably even more impressive. But no well, it might have happened, like, no one is keeping track of the fact that, you know, if there is, like, another tournament happening, like, maybe someone won, like, the last eight matches and then the yeah. eight, you know what I mean? But it, either, either way, that's, like, very impressive. Did, but, okay, I, 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 were you, like, actually playing really well this tournament? Or, like, how did that happen? I, because I saw some of your matches and like you, you know i'm not saying that you played bad or anything but you were like getting like really lucky at least for uh, like obviously. <laughs> obviously you have to get really lucky i think on saturday i think i played extremely well like i i, I did some i made some mistakes i haven't rewatched the matches yet i will do that tomorrow but i think I, on, on saturday i think i played really well on sunday i made a lot of mistakes but basically any mistake i made none of them got punished really mm -hmm. For example, the the one I the one that really stand out for me, they even said it in coverage like ten times. Was when you know you had a hydrate crisis that was lethal, and Paulo had like a flying aura on one of his guys, and you had the I don't know what's the name of the card, but it's like a minus two minus zero aura, and it just just like removes all the abilities from the creature. And the way it works is that there are like these layers, and depending on which aura was like put on the creature, the latest that like applies so it would actually lose flying if I understand it correctly you just yeah, didn't, I, I didn't just, know that I, I just don't know how it worked I just assume it's gonna keep flying but like <laughs> I, I, I'm just curious about this because like I obviously understand that you can like border card in other matchups as well but I assume it it, it, it is in the sideboard for this specific matchup right and like I know yeah. that they play only like usually two or three of that aura but it all, also interacts with all the other auras like the same way so like how did you like not know <laughs> Well, I didn't prepare much for uh, historic. I was <laughs> mostly trying to play the other decks, and and I, I was I was the the person who was playing against Pat for basically every every deck that we had. Um, but yeah, so so I didn't play much with the deck. Um, I played a lot of more standard because it was it was more fun. So yeah, I, I mean, I, if if it was a real life tournament, I would just ask a judge. But on arena, it's kind of awkward, and I I kind of just assumed that I know how it works because. Um, it never came up in testing. So like you were you were you were in that spot and you like weren't sure whether it works, but you thought that it didn't, so you just like didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you. Yeah. I, I could have literally messaged Hutch <laughs> on Discord, but I don't know. I was kind of tuned in. I, I, I mean, I also won the game anyway. So. Yeah, you take the comment the next turn, so easy. Yeah. Uh, so so you, you you said that you obviously it doesn't make that much sen sense to talk about this deck in details because it's like rotating but uh, you, you said that you actually didn't play that much with the band deck uh, and you were playing against it who, who, who like how did you came to that conclusion to, to play play this deck like was it just like your teammates Ivan Stan or like how did how did yeah. the deck happen it did, the, it did really well at the pro tour the band deck and then Obviously, the, the biggest two decks going into instrument for Junt and Auras. And we thought there was not going to be that, much, that many Aura decks, but we we're still kind of scared of it. So we played a lot of the band versus Black White. And early on, it, it was just like a really bad matchup. But we had the, the four Narsa to Comet. And then we added the Subdual card into our sideboard. And that helped a lot. I, I think the matchup is like 40 to 45% for band. So it's not that bad, and, and we fought really good against Chant, and we also fought people might show up with the absent deck, just like a hate on Chant, and that was also not a very good matchup, so... Mm. Yeah, basically that was the, the idea behind the band deck, and we couldn't find anything better. By the way, when you say like 40 to 42 percent, do you mean do you mean percentage like for, for, for winning the match, or like for like one game? Because th then it's like different. The match, I think. I don't think that the, the, the match changes that much. No, what I'm saying is that if you have like 40% to win one game, then it means that your overall matchup is like, like yeah. for, you know, even lower. Yeah, That's what I just wanted to clarify. I think it's probably a match. Okay, sure. Because, you know, people often use these terms like it's like a 45, 55% matchup, but I, I don't know, don't think there is like a common belief what they actually mean by that. So I, I wanted yeah. to clarify. It is probably weird, yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to ask about is the Sultai deck because we, uh, me and Andre actually talked a little bit before before the event, and I told him that I think the Sultai deck is uh, actually like really good. Obviously, I didn't have the version that they had, like obviously. But you, you told me that it's crap, but then it like crushed the tournament. Like, what do you, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, first of all, it didn't crush. Okay, the, sure. I think 
I, I didn't look at the data. I just saw Tsivka's yeah. tweet yeah. That, that it was really good. So the, I, mean, I just Stan is, Stan is crazy. He just I mean the matchup for us was really bad. So that's why Stan was like still. That's why he tweeted that he thinks it's the best deck ever. But they they had like sixty two percent win rate or something. Our deck had a better win rate than theirs. Um, and I mean I obviously their version was very good. I'm not saying the deck is bad. The, the version we had was bad. I mean our our combo kill was uh, <laughs> again <laughs> Crater Who Behemoth and and Time Walk and the other Crater Who Behemoth. Uh, which was Ivan's version and then he was searching for Hornet Queens and stuff. So yeah, I, I think see. their version was, was a lot better. <laughs> and I don't know, I, I think the the version might be okay. When when we talked, I, I was talking about the, the version we had and the or everyone else had. I, I the stock version before this event was just really bad. Um, and yeah, the, the version looked good. I think it might be contender moving forward. Brainstorm seems pretty sweet in that deck. So yeah, there are like a lot of a lot of. I, I didn't see the entire spoiler, but obviously, like you know, people are talking about like fearless looting, brainstorm, and stuff like that. Um, what do you what do you think is going to happen to historic now? Like the, I, don't, I didn't see all of the cards, but maybe there's like an, an, another like sweet thing that you know might shake things things up. It just like seems that the format is going to change completely. Like if you just like add cards like looting and brainstorm to it, like you're probably not gonna see the same decks as now, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Like what do you think? I mean Arc like Phoenix is obviously gonna be huge. I think it's basically everything that was legal when it was really good in modern is legal now. And you also have brainstorm so uh yeah that deck is probably gonna be quite good. And I don't know. I, I don't think about it much. I'll just play with the cards. Or I guess I <laughs> One really, because I I will probably not play much Magic in the next half a year. So yeah, I wanted to ask about it. You you, you tweeted that you know n now that you're like cute for everything, you don't have to play. That you're probably gonna take like a big break. Um, what do you what do you mean by a big break? Like first of all, like, are you not gonna play Magic at all? And like, how long do you think that's like going to be? Uh, yeah, I don't think I'll play at all. I I think I'm not sure. I might. Like, are you not excited to like play draft with the new cards? No. <laughs> That's so I sad. Just, I don't know. It's just I play too much magic. And if I think if you do something as your work, it just start stops becoming fun. And yeah, I think I'll play a bit for the gauntlet because I'll probably want to help the boys. Um, and yeah, I, I have to play the pro tour, which I'm qualified for. So I'll I mean, I'll play that. I'll probably want will not practice for much. Wait, uh, when 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 is that actually? I don't know, in like two or three months. Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay. That's that, that's crazy that you're saying that, like, you know, it's your, it's your job, so you, like, don't like to do it. Like, I understand that, obviously, testing with rogues that you played for half a year, like, just to, like, find, like, a small edge in a sideboard, it's probably not that much fun. But, like, when new set comes out, like, I'm just, I, I don't know, I just want to draft. Like, do you, do you, are, you, are you not that way? Like, do you not want to draft? Like, I don't understand. No. I, I don't know when it changed, but... No, like the, uh, for as long as I know you, you were always like this. I remember even when you were like twenty, and you like you know starting going to PTs and stuff. You were always like, eh. <laughs> like I, think, I think now it's even worse, honestly. I don't know. I think I was pretty excited when Rina came out. That was I, think, I played a lot of Magic and I was I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, but yeah, this uh, I, like for this year, my my goal was to like play a lot and really give it. My best to to achieve staying in MPL or qualifying to Worlds, but I just didn't. Then I did anyway. Is it? Is it I, do you do you do you like find find fun in the fact that you like doing something that matters, and then like when you like win, you get like rewarded, or is it like not fun for you as well, and you just like do it because you just like have to make money some way, or like? I mean, I I really like competing. If I I wish we had like a big tournament every weekend and. My preparation for the tournaments would be the tournaments itself. Like, oh. That would be great. I just don't like practicing. Okay, so you just like don't like to play when you know there are like no high stakes, but you actually enjoy the tournaments it's yeah. themselves. Oh, so much! I, I was so excited to play in this. Okay. Like, I think the the big the big difference between me like I, I talked to a lot of players before this thing or this last weekend, and everyone was very anxious, like Brad, Paulo, because they were like really high stakes and. Um, and I just wasn't. I was really excited to play finally because you know, I really enjoy playing rogues. 
Do you, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you do you maybe think that the reason is that you're living in Czech, so you're like pouring in money, but for them it actually matters a lot? Well, Paul lives in Brazil. I don't think it's really okay. Sure. I, I don't know the the money uh, situation in Brazil, but I'm, I mean, obviously, it's a well, it's a lot of money for me too. Like the difference between MPL and rivals, it's twice as much money. But I don't know. I don't think I don't, I don't think about the money too much, and I don't. I just try not to be so stressed. But the whole thing, even okay. though I obviously am a little bit, but I don't think it's it's change. Like I think I was the same amount of stress week one of the MPL as I was this week, and I think that kind of helped me. Mm -hmm. Do you do you do you feel the same amount of stress as like in the in the in the in the pro tours, or is it like different? Uh, the the pro tours this year were just a joke. No, I don't mean the pro tours this year. I mean like you know three years ago or whatever. Uh, I don't think so. Weirdly. Um, I was really, really stressed that the PTI one. I remember that that was probably the most stressed out I've ever been, because the the swing between making the MPL and not making is just so huge, and it really like changed my whole life. Um, but norm, for normal PTs, I don't think I was very stressed. Okay, well, uh, thanks for your time today. That will be that will be all for today. Uh, you know. I'm, I'm I'm happy that you're first. I you might not believe me, but I actually I actually am. So uh, I believe you. Okay. You never lie to me. <laughs> I uh, yeah, and good luck in the future tournaments. I guess. When is the when is the worlds actually actually happening? Uh, no one knows. Uh, no one knows. <laughs> yeah, no one knows the price pool. Uh, no, no one knows anything. Like it might just not happen at all. Like who knows? Yeah. So I I mean my hope is that it's gonna be the first post COVID real life tournament. Which I, I think is pretty likely because yeah, but like do you, do you, I, 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 I don't think that there will be like no like real life tournament like this year, right? And it has to be like this year to to make it worth for this year. You know? I don't know. The, it could be in like last year. Worlds was in February, and oh, I don't know. The, the season ended in like September, and then that Worlds was in February or something. I see. So. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it could also happen. I think, like, if it was in December, I think it's possible the road will be, like, in, in, in fine shape for us to travel. Mm. So, we will have to see. Have, yeah, I actually talked see. about that with my friend the other day. And, like, he said that even if, like, the corona thing gets fine in, like, some countries, like, for the entire system to, like, break, like most countries have to be fine right especially america like if america isn't fine like they are they're like they cannot make like a gp in italy because if, if you cannot make gps like in other i know but but i think gps is, is yeah i know i know i'm just saying I, like I, I don't think they will make like one re real life tournament and not the not the other ones but maybe i'm wrong about that yeah i don't know like if you like for example tennis tournaments they still happen because it's just like 50 mm. people playing every week and they just travel so I don't know. I think they could certainly make worlds in real life, and I think they will probably try their hardest to. Because I know they they put a lot of money and a lot of work into worlds the last time it was, and I think that event was excellent. I think people really enjoyed watching it, and um, it was a great show. I think, and I hope they make it again. All right. Uh, if you guys like the video, please click on the like and subscribe button. Uh, don't forget to follow Andre on on Twitter as well. And uh, yeah. bye bye.